my gosh, it's been a little bit. How are you guys doing today? It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today we're going to tackle how to paint a realistic cat eye for Paint Your Pet Week. And Stun Hands is doing some type of adjustment, probably because my grumpy cat with Katniss Pin is not showing as awesomely as it should. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are feeling confident to tackle this. In the description, I have a bunch of information about materials. If you're here for the live event, I probably have to edit that material list because we got, we got a little excited today. But there's a link to a photo that we're going to be referencing. This photo right here. John's got some photos that I gave him to put up on the screen for me from my reference. Oh, I do. I have to go find them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've said so so many times. <laughs> like you've got my reference photos. You, on the other hand, have to uh, go get some reference photos. But listen, I like Paint My Photo. I think it's a great resource for artists and for photographers to work together in a way that's not harmful to the other. But there's, you know, there's graphicstock.com. There's a lot of places to get macro images of cat's eyes. I sent you a close-up of one, babe. Ooh. of cat's eyes that um, you know you can use and reference. So definitely do that. Don't try to paint what you're not looking at, especially if you're trying to be realistic, because it makes it a lot more challenging. Now it is okay to trace the shape of the eye. That's perfectly acceptable, because drawing, it, tra drawing is not the only skill in art. It's just a skill in art sometimes. No, I definitely uh, messaged him over to you. <laughs> John's running around looking. No? No. They didn't send? No. I guess I sent a bunch of cat's eyes to somebody else who's probably sitting there going, why? Yep, not me. Is Cinnamon <laughs> sending me all these macro cat eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get an interesting answer back here at some point, and I'm sure John will figure out how to get them to me. <laughs> we'll get them up there. <laughs> we'll get them up there by the time we need them. Right now, I just got to lay it in. So the first thing I do is I sketch in my cat eye or trace in my cat eye. Right, so I follow along with my picture and I do my nice curve. Most cat eyes have this kind of beautiful curve. There's a shadow lid underneath there and they're very, very round. It reminds me very much of these beautiful liquid marbles, right? And then we have, and it's interesting on cat irises because they can really change shape, but we have this beautiful narrow iris right here, this narrow one. And that's really all we need to do to put that cat eye in. Now, I'm having kind of a week, so I'm going to put a wish on my canvas. Um, I have a friend who's really sick, and she's in a lot of danger, so I'm going to wish that she's okay and that they're able to help her. And then the other uh, wish that I want to put in today, even though this is a um, – oh, thank you, John. That's perfect – is a fantastic, fantastic um, uh, lesson is – if you have pets and you have um, those palms, they're like a sago palm, um, you should know those are really poisonous to your animals. So my wish is that all, all of the animals are safe from the sago palms because there's a real rash of dogs, especially getting very sick. So on Paint Your Pet Week, I definitely want to put that warning out there if you have one of those plants to make sure to keep your pet and children away from them because they're highly poisonous. So that's my safety message, but it's serious. It is. Thank you. I'm um, sending um, some love to a family I know that has just lost a dear companion due to that. It's a pretty palm tree, but it's just not friendly to pets. Yeah. So I get, I get how we have I got my little cup today. And I'm going to say, do we have lots of wishes going out there? You know, wishes for Jane and wishes for floods and, and all of those, you know, all those wishes for our light keepers out there. As you put those in our canvas and, and help keep those wishes for us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for passing on the good energy and the good karma and everything. And thank you very much for the support of the vlogs. Yeah. That's right? we have unexpected. Four, we have about four people who are really not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly everybody's pretty supportive That's of the vlogs. Amazing, man. Thank you, guys. I was just like, really, really appreciate that. We had fun making them. More to come. Oh, yeah. We've got we more. weren't timely. Like, we weren't getting them dropped as they were happening. But honestly, like, on that one night with the hotel, I don't think I could have gotten a vlog up. Oh, man, no. It's like... I tell you what, the processing power of my home computer versus the laptop is enormous. Enormous. Oh, by the way, if you're brand new to the channel, that's John. He's my husband. He uh, helps these live events happen. He sure tracks. He follows me around in cameras and reads comments. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So we're not having a complete moment up here in our studio. I know you can on YouTube. <laughs> I know that happens on YouTube. <laughs> but this is not that. 
forget. We forget to introduce me sometimes. I do. I just sort of a lurker. You're not a lurker. You're my awesomeness. Thank you. <laughs> he's he's he keeps the show awesome. Our materials today um, are going to be real simple. I've got phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, medium. Use hue if you are trying to save money or if you have children. I have phthalo green. Um, this one is the yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. I have Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White, and some type of blending or retarding medium. So here's two that I really like. I don't know if I show them here. Here. Here's two that I really like. These are two I really like, and I'll make sure that I put those in the description. They're, they're two that I just get a lot of success with, and I think that they're really important for doing eyes. And uh, petting pets, which we're doing all week. Just everything all week is pet, 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 pet your pet. And, oh, and we'd love to feature, John's crawling under there, so it's distracting me. We'd love to feature your pets because I feel like um, sometimes the most supportive companion in an art studio is your furry companion. So if you could share with us photos of your pets in your art studio supporting you, or video um, in your art studio of your pet supporting you. We'd like to put something very special together to pay tribute to all the pets and everything as part of our celebrating 50,000 subs week. So if you'd be willing to share that with us, you can um, send that all. Make sure somebody, Lisa, somebody who's here will know John's email and can just give that randomly to people. <laughs> Oh, in thanks. the comments, and I'll make sure that there's... Um, randomly we have a, give my email out? Though? We have a contact on the YouTube channel, too. So, and of course, on the Facebook and anywhere. Just send us videos wherever you can. You've done it before, and we would really appreciate it because we like to honor your pets. John, what are you doing? You are tripping me out. You don't see what I'm seeing. It's so busy in front of me. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to paint a picture here is what I'm going to do. I've got my reference photo where I can see it, right? So I'm looking at my reference photo and I have this lid right here, which is very highlighted with the fur. I have a shadow here and a shadow here and there's highlights towards the center, right? And then I'm looking along the lid line and how the fur is coming out. And all of this is what tells me a story about a realistic cat's eye. So these are all elements I'm going to pay attention to. Sometimes realism is considered very, very complicated. And it's not that realism is technically as complicated as people feel, but it's time intensive. So it just be, be ready to be here for a minute <laughs> is really what it is. Be ready to be here for a minute. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to kind of shade out and get the value sets that I'm going to be working with. So I might take, actually, believe it or not, a little of my burnt sienna and my phthalo blue, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to make this kind of dark brown green color and I'm going to come along my eye and I'm going to start putting in a deep value here that I'm going to want to, not like a grisaille, but I'm starting to think in terms of value. I know that I often have a shadow under a lid. You know, when you look at lids and things, they're often shadowing an eye. And so a lot of how I'm going to get this is making sure I'm paying attention to where the lights and darks are. And I'm definitely use blending and glazing mediums. Another trick that a lot of people don't know but can really help you is your canvas. Oh, yeah. The more realistic you want to paint, the smoother surface you want. Like, I'm kind of being a rebel here oh. and painting on this canvas board, which is a 9 by 12 canvas board. But if you were at home and you really wanted to get into this, I would say when you're ready, invest in some very smooth prepped masonite boards. Hmm. Right? See how I'm kind of just blending this out? So I'm going to give you a quick shout out from David. He Hi, says, David. you're the best, he wants to give you a shout out for being the best YouTuber ever. David, thank you. So. Thank you. Art high fives. Art high fives back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, David. You know, it's you very. Don't, you don't get to read the comments, so I just like to, I like to share some of them. With oh, you. my God. You know, and it, it really is so nice to hear because, you know, it just keeps you fueled. So see how just using that glazing medium 
that blending medium and my paint I've actually shaded out an eye that I can work on it's not it's not really that hard or serious when I'm trying to do that and it, it can really help me okay now I'm gonna do an interesting thing I'm gonna just take burnt sienna and I'm gonna kind of paint this area around my eye a lot of times when we're painting oh, a could, black can animal. Can you pull that down just a little bit? We're real zoomed in there, so we can... Oh, real, I really oh. thought we had... Okay. There you go. We're just a little bit of fur. I'm not going to do all the fur. I just want to kind of give you guys an idea of how the fur might get done. All right. And what kind of tones. So when I'm painting a black cat or black fur, I'm going to alternate between blue and brown as my undertones, probably. Just knowing me. That's what I like to do. Yeah. There's no gospel on this, but as you might have figured out, there's none in art in general, <laughs> but there is some things you can do. See, I know I have a higher highlight here along this eye, so the brown makes a nice kind of hundery tone there. Now, are you making it darker towards the eye itself? You, Towards this right here? Well, no, the, the line you just made. It looks like you left more paint, made it darker. Yeah, I did. It's very dark here. Yeah. And then I kind of lightened it up as I went in. And I want to do that because an animal eye is really like a marble. Yeah. Like a beautifully lit marble. I'm taking just Thalo Blue. Crazy rebel that I am. And I'm coming along here. We have to be careful there because you're real close to the edge. Should I zoom out a little bit? Or you... Just a little bit, yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Zoom out a little bit. This is not a RoboCam? All right. I just want everyone to be able to see all the detail, how it comes in. Because I think once they see it, they can do it. That's my theory. And again, we're just painting just this eye here. We're just talking about just this eye. I'm not going to get crazy here. Just a little bit of eye. And then once you get it, you'll be like, oh, I can do this all day. And you can. You can do this all day. Get back into the brown. Now I've got a little space around my eye I can show you. And it's not maybe colors that you were expecting. So Ian has a question here. Okay. Let's see here. Where, where'd it go? It said, uh, Sherpa, do you use acrylic canvas paper? And when would you not use it? Uh, I do use acrylic canvas paper. And I would not use it um, in general for artwork I intended to sell. Gotcha. And, and the only reason is, is that there's a perceived value on art materials and the work is not less. Like if I paint on paper, it's not like I put less work into it than painting on a canvas or a beautifully presented mason board. But I will receive significantly less money, like 60% less on the piece hmm. if it's on paper. And it costs a lot more to frame. Yes. So it's just crazy. So like on a business decision and that's it, I might not use paper. Artistically, it's as valid as canvas. It's like in sculpture, bronze is perceived to be the best value. Yes, it has the highest value. Yeah, you're a serious collector if you're working the, the bronzes. So today I'm just painting, um, just so you guys know, and it's in there. I'm painting number 10. Yeah, we got Goldilocks back, just if you've been wondering. Down to number two brights in the Simply Simmons extra firm line, plus a couple micro details. So those are all down in the description if you were looking to see what we were painting with, what materials we were using. And do I think kids could do this? I actually do think kids can absolutely do this piece. It's cool. an interesting thing, but I really strongly feel like they can. I'm going to take a little yellow ochre to my um, uh, thalo green, and I'm going to start layering in some color and some thought in my eye. Putting it out here. I'm going to really enjoy my blending mediums. So there's a, an interesting question that I don't, I, I don't know that I know the answer to offhand. Hmm. It says, uh, John, how long are you and Cinnamon married? Uh, it is 19 or 20 years. <laughs> you <laughs> have to do like the that. math. We're, we're, we're approaching so it. So long. We're not that worried about <laughs> it no more. <laughs> But we should do something about it. I know. I know. So I'm just putting this sort of bright shock of yellow ochre and yellow blue. And I am paying attention to my brush directionality. In that I am kind of, if you notice this, and hopefully you can see on the up close, I'm curving these brush strokes to kind of imply the eye shape. 
And I'm going to get a little of my um, phthalo green and a little of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to come along this eye here. And I'm going to start casting a shadow. Casting that shadow is really enjoyable. That's going to be a big thing. A lot of times people are like, oh, how'd you get that eye? It's so realistic. And it's, it is about a certain couple of things. And the shadow under the lid is a big one. If you can remember to put the shadow under the lid, that's a big, big deal. See how it's just starting to already shade out? I mean, it just takes, it's so crazy. Yeah. How, how a realistic eye comes in. And just so I don't lose it, I'm going to put in my... My little black here. I'm going to add a little blue to my Mars black. Yeah. That way I can actually put a slightly cloudy element in there. <laughs> what? You just keep jumping off camera. So I'm like, oh, where are you going? Where am I going? We're trying to get you guys to see this because we're going to be doing the pets this weekend. We're going to be, you know, getting our photos on our canvases and tracing them on and finding our value shades. And where you guys are going to have success or feel really good sometimes is going to be like in your pet's eye. So let's see. Got this nice little triangular curve here. And I'm going to get just a smidge of... <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Somebody's calling us. And I'm going to add just a small... Hopefully you guys can pick this up. A small amount of white just a little bit into this. To make it not just a deep black pool because believe it or not they're not just black pools and they generally have like a cloud or a space that the light is reflecting through that opening there and i very much like that yeah yeah i'm gonna get some more of my um, brown here and i'm gonna start pulling a little bit up along this little lid here maybe a little more blue into it i'm gonna just start at like creating the shades and shadows and this little lid space. Getting my blending medium if I need it. Glazing. Glazing gla the today's project is brought to you <laughs> by the word glazing. See how I'm really paying attention to my brush directionality. Yeah. Makes a difference, guys. I know Janine right now is going bananas because she's like really been working her eyes lately. And I've noticed a lot of you guys have been working your eyes. Guess what? This, these principles work exactly the same for like lizard eye or human eye or horse eye or any of those things. Now I'm going to get a little of my cad yellow and I'm going to mix in a sm smidge, a smidge of my green and a little white. And some of my gel medium. And I'm going to start putting some of the these highlights that I'm going to be needing into my eye. See, I'm pulling those in. Mm -hmm. And I'm very light pressure. I'm sure that just popped everybody's ear. <laughs> can you hear that, babe? Yeah, we can hear you. You're okay. No, you, you, didn't, you didn't pop oh. everything too bad. Okay. Uh, very light pressure and pulling it into the paint and letting the colors vary and I'm coming around this oculus Can you see already how it's just yeah just starts to create this really stunning I keep pushing the wrong buttons it's okay because I say hi to everybody hi how are you guys I have missed you guys while we were on our trip in in New York you know, I've got the palette cam and my primary camera switched today, so it's oh, is that what's going on? That's why I keep pushing, I keep pushing the wrong button to go so go around. So, uh, sorry for my auto switching craziness. I'm pushing this a little bit into my shadow, but I know I can put my shadow back. And I'm looking at my little eye space. I'm going to keep pulling this into here, but retaining it. Everybody missed us too, by the way. They're all telling us how, how they enjoyed, how they enjoy us coming back, and they missed us while we were gone. We missed you guys too. I'm grabbing a little phthalo blue and phthalo green. I'm gonna come back in here and make sure I've got just a little something afoot here. Dusting it around this edge. I am shading my marble, guys. 
And you'll notice I'm going to be putting in elements of this kind of blue-green color in my eye cavity. Hopefully you guys are having ooh-ah moments. I'm really hoping you are. I think it's pretty ooh-ah. You think it's pretty ooh-ah? Yeah. You're on team ooh-ah? Definitely. Making sure I have that shadow under here. I'm going to be bringing that around. Yeah, bring that around. Enough. Can I bring that around enough? Back with this green. Keep pulling it out. And you can see I'm just dabbing around. I'm looking for spots. I look into spaces in my eye uh -huh. that give me this green. I'm going to grab a little of my blending medium and make sure this is blended out, glazed in. You know how blending medium? You can use glazing. So here's the deal on glazing medium, right, versus gel is the drying times are slower and on some of the brands not all of them that gets to be a big problem like uh, i love matisse but their glazing medium yeah never dries oh really I mean, it like does dry but it's like where are you going there <laughs> not quickly enough it's it, it takes it an upsetting amount of time i'm going to pull some just yellow ochre i'm going to start pulling some of that into little flecks into this eye see how this eye starts to feel very realistic. Yeah. That is really neat. You know, because I'm not painting an eye. I'm not even letting my left brain weigh in on this project. It's going to just draw me a symbol of an eye. It's what my left brain is going to do. Oh, but I'm not going to have none of it. I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to be like, no, I want some right brain insight onto this beautiful, incredible green eye. Now, Vic had a, had a quick message. Me uh, actually, there are several people who are echoing this. Hmm. They, they wanted to thank you that they really loved the inspirational video, and she should make more. Vic sent that, and then it was immediately echoed by about five, six, seven people. So, Is this the motivational yeah, one motivational. or the meditation tutorial, uh, or just all of it in well, general? Well, I'll go back up and see what Vic <laughs> said. It says, uh, hey, John, tell Sherpa I really love the inspirational video, and she should make more. We would really like to. We enjoy that creatively as a process. I think it's it's just a really beautiful journey for me to go through. I like doing the meditation videos. I know they're not for everybody, but when you need them, you need them. Yeah, uh, Flame loved it. <laughs> when you need them, you need them. And then the motivational is something I think that, you know, we can all use a little bit of just sort of like a little spiritual hug. So those are fun. Those are just fun for us to make. And we're really glad you like them. Yeah. So send in those pet pictures of your hero companion in your art studio supporting you. It's definitely both of them that they liked. There's everyone saying both. both okay. of them. <laughs> More is coming. And it won't be all of the videos. It's like not all the videos will be travel vlogs, but we have a lot of travel coming up over over this next segment because we got to go to a, we got Creator Day and Content Lab and VidCon coming up. So there's travel to share. Yeah, there's stuff to. Stuff we'll to get faster. <laughs> oh yeah. More oh. real time as we upload them. But thank you for your wishes in advance. Whoever wrote the wishing today, I hope Sherpa gets to hotel. Thank you, because it did. It helped me. So now we'll get back to our eye. Yeah, we're going to get back to our eye. And I'm going to pull out this thalo green and maybe a little more yellow. And then some white. A little blending medium. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling, especially right here, some of this coming out. Look at that. Layers and layers of color are really, really, really required. My pressure is incredibly light. And if you notice, I'm allowing the paint to streak. If you're a young brush at home or just a brush that's newly excited about painting, don't let projects like this intimidate you. They're just a practice. And, and Lisa has kindly reminded me to remind you to, to remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe. That does help. <laughs> <laughs> because we always forget to do that. We do. And, and it does help if you guys like, comment, subscribe, especially share. Because yeah. sharing really helps get the word out. And, you know, it lets YouTube, like, let, lets YouTube know that you guys like what you see here and you'd like to see more of it. So, 
And she's got that eye. super fun, right? Yeah. So that's just really coming together. And it really doesn't take, I'm going to kind of define a little bit more here. I'm going to maybe pull out some yellow and a little white and a little blending medium and do something kind of oh, I just right here, here just around this iris. You want to show what you did there again real quick? I just grabbed a little yellow, a little white, and a little blending medium. And it's okay. very light on the brush. You can see how light it is on this brush. Yeah. And I'm just going to pull around there. I'm going to put just a couple of these light flecks here and there. Like your kitty would have. Right? Because your kitty would have some light flecks. And I'm going to even add some. Maybe a couple here. So Stephanie's and asking, how do you pick the colors for the highlights and the dark areas? How do I do that? All right. So I just learned, because I met Key's Ritual. Yeah. Over there, and he's a makeup artist. So I learned, I apparently could be good at makeup if I tried harder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for... Thanks, Keys. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to be doing makeup videos. No worries. No illusions about that. Um, but it, it, it's interesting. It's a similar process. Is I'm looking for these undertones. So when I'm looking in a picture or a bunch of reference pictures, I'm looking at what colors am I seeing? What do I see on the top? And what does it feel like it is underneath? Gotcha. Right? And as I'm looking at that, I'm looking to see how does it look on the top and how does it look underneath? I'm trying to see is that brown, is that blue? And I remember something very important. And I, and, and I think Carol Marine, one of my favorite painters on earth, said this best, which is that you can do a lot of crazy stuff with color if you get the value right. Right. And yeah. she's really correct. You can do a lot of banana stuff with color if you can just get the value right. And that's like back to that Grisaille quest. And then in those tonal studies, ske doing those charcoal sketches and starting to see where's the shadows, where's the highlights, where, the, where are the midtones. And then, you know, on top of that, can I see the color underneath? So like when I'm up here on the lid and I'm looking at his fur, I realize it's not really a true black. It, there's this sort of brown undertone, but then in the areas where it is true black, it's got a blue undertone. And I'm trying to, like, capture those and represent those and really find those spaces. Yeah. Which I'll work those a little bit. I'm going to let this dry just a titch so I can come back with some glazes and create some more drama here. So I'm going to go back up into his brow with a little brown and black now. Now it's a little brown and black. I'm going to still have this very light pressure. Pull this here. And just you're just going to kind of see how this fur is happening. Right. You've seen these step-by-step -step tutorials on Pinterest, have you not? Uh, yes. Yes. This is pretty much, you know, what we'll see there. And I'm just making sure I've got... So now I have this sort of brown cast. And I liked having the pure pigment because I know that these paints are going to come on slightly translucent. And that that is going to show and do what we might think of as glowing through. Glowing through? Glowing through. Huh. So it just glows through, and I really like that. I'm taking a little of my burnt and my yellow ochre, and I'm going to come under my eye here. And I'm going to pull this slightly more highlighted area out. Now I'm going to need a really dark blue or black line between these two spaces. That's the lid, and that's going to be some important stuff for me. But I'm not going to get it quite yet because I'm starting to put in some of that fur thought. Now, Aaron has a question here. I have an answer as I he come along my little edge here pulling it out. Cinnamon. And yes. I can just hear the curiousness in his voice. I like the curiousness in your voice. Or her. Or okay. Aaron. Aaron's one of those, you know, yeah. could throw you a voice yeah. names. He says, can we, can we also use different colors juxtaposed to each other to cause the form to turn? I don't mean to call you out or nothing, Aaron, but if you're asking that question, you kind of already know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you should be starting up your own YouTube channel and be talking about these things. <laughs> I love when people do that. It's a well-articulated <laughs> question. And ask really intense art questions. It's like, dude, you know. <laughs> Aaron's a regular. She's, yeah. We, we, I see Aaron all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're back in art school and you're like ah so there's a lot of ways to get to the goal 
Yeah. Right. And what I would say is, um, yes, <laughs> but also when you're when you're a new student, right? Like Aaron and I. So, so Mona's get, very curious. She's like, I, I she's I don't understand the question, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Whole another quest. <laughs> But w what I want you to do is, is I want you to, um, like, as you're building up your skill sets and as you're pulling them out, realize that there's a lot of ways to create effect in a painting. So you can use the color wheel. You can use color theory to get a lot of things like the way colors are when they lay next to each other and the way they vibrate and hit the eye. That's a whole big subject. You know, um, go ahead. If you find this is really working for you, take that on. Aaron and I are going to have a minute later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this because i got to get this fur in. <laughs> I'm going to pull my black and my blue. And I'm going to kind of, with my glazing medium, because I want the blue to kind of come through. I'm going to pull this very light pressure here. Very light pressure. <laughs> There's actually a bunch of really. <laughs> What's gone on now? <laughs> <laughs> everyone's joking in the in the chat now about the questions. <laughs> Aaron's Aaron's got everyone going pretty good. So. <laughs> oh, good. That, well, you know that's what we need to do. Everyone's having a wonderful laugh. That's what we need to do in a safe space. It's really. Nothing is more terrific than discussing color theory and art theory in yeah. a safe space yeah. where people are supporting you and we're just discussing, hey, this is something that's great that works for me or no, I have it, you know, worked in compliments before, but I'm interested in that. You know, the only time it gets to be a thing is when 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 it's not a safe space. <laughs> so could, could you push the, the that forged touch? Can we see how this is coming together? Mm -hmm. Right? I, a lot of you guys have been asking me about high realism. High and now you're kind of seeing the realism. process. The layers and layers. It, it is layers. I yeah. like watching you do the yeah. layers. Y you do. I'm going to come in here and make sure that I've got a very similar blue-black happening. You can see me. I've got a number two brush here. And I'm making sure I'm pulling that very strongly between the brown fur and the eyeball. You know, if you need to round out, this is a good time to do it. And make any adjustments to shapes that you need to do. And here's a crazy thing. I'm going to do this crazy thing right here. I've got my blue and my black, and now I'm going to get some white. I'm going to get this crazy... Might add a little red to it. It's this crazy color. There we go. And I'm going to come right here between the lid and the iris. And this is the color, believe it or not, of the eyeball itself. Oh, okay. It's really weird. Horses particularly have this going on. And I just want to make sure I've got that in there. And I'm pulling this very lightly and I'm layering and I'm glazing. And I'm defining that space. This will be really awesome in a minute. <laughs> it looks really cool now. <laughs> it's just about working this, this space very slowly. So this is a number two bright... I really like the number two brights very, 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 very much. Now I'm kind of going back and I've got some, I'm going to come in and, and really play the lines of these two spaces against each other. Got this nice glaze of burnt sienna. The only trick is if you're doing blending medium over glazing medium, know that if you add too much blending medium to the paint, it can affect its ability to stick to anything. Mm. Just come in here. Just 
going to get some of this blue here and make sure I've got this nice dark line between these two spaces. And I'm just blending that out. This is not that different if you've been really good at pastels. I think a lot of people don't think of acrylic painting in this process, and it's really great for it. Right? They don't think of it that way, and it's just really, 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 really great for it. And yet, clearly, it does this with no difficulty at all. So now I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and a little of my burnt sienna. I'm going to add some black to it to gray it out. And some white. And I'm going to start with very short brush strokes coming along here. And really follow, pay attention to the directionality that I'm seeing on my um, picture. And yeah, it's kind of like almost like painting almost every little hair. You're not really, but you are certainly painting the flow of the hair. And you're going to come in and paint some of the every little hairs. That's really cool. It is. It's just really, really cool. This is what we do. It's what we do. And I saw Todd in here. Oh, I should say, we have a huge room. We've had like 200 people here, and like all your friends are here. Todd's here. Flame's here. Casey. And I Mona everybody. And Kim Sim and Ian. And and just all of them. They're just, and I saw uh, I Mark really here. I really want to see Marilyn. some eyes, guys. Yes. Show them you can do it. Yeah, put some eyes up. We should definitely, there's like, yeah. Show Lots them you can eyes. do it. I want to see them. And we're just going to keep coming with this. Look deep and into see how my dry eye. my brush is and how I'm just. I can't believe how many layers I'm going to have to do. Ooh, I, apparently Todd had a question that I missed. Oh, hey, Todd. Let's answer your question. I'm going to have to wait until it comes back up. I, I have, there's no chance for me scrolling back. <laughs> off. You're going to have to remessage it. Like, <laughs> it's the chat is going so fast right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and and this is this is something I think people really want to do, and it's really doable. I love sharing this because this is something people really want to do. They want to get more realistic in their art. It's a nice skill. It is not again realism is not talent. The ability oh, I really can't say this strongly enough. The ability to slow down and just be with a painting for a hundred hours is not talent. That's perseverance, mm. right? And artists that are fantastic. I have really favorite, favorite, favorite artist, Tom Dubois. Do you remember him? <laughs> he did highly realistic uh, modernist Raphaelite paintings depicting uh, religious scenes would be the best thing. Like Hosanna. He used to be, you know, remember back when all those frame galleries were like everywhere? Yeah. Right? In the mall. His stuff was always in the mall and was like sold out. But dude spent like I don't oh. know two thousand hours in there. What's going on? You're like I'm oh. just I'm 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 reading Todd's question. What's Todd's question? So what he's really wondering is how to further the understanding of the contribution of Cezanne in post impressionism and its after effects and further development on cubism. Which I could answer for you, but I actually think that you should take the course because it was worth it to find out. <laughs> John actually had to take our history to date me. I so he weirdly knows <laughs> some of this stuff. <laughs> Though, of course, you know, we went to a very different university, and a lot of times everything you could just answer Akhenaten <laughs> and it would get you an A, and that's a whole other story for another day. <laughs> But on a high level, this is my theory on that. And then we're going to get back to drawing a realistic eye. No thumbing me down because I, like, address <laughs> this. Um, here's the deal. Whenever you're looking at artwork comparatively, what you're really looking at is that in a time period, in a frame period, right, you're looking at a bunch of artists for whom art is nothing but rebelling about what, against whatever's come before, right? So how do you rebel... How do you add to the conversation? How do you contribute and tell a more true current story 
than to whatever happened before. So whenever you're looking at anything in art history, you're always looking at that incrementally. And then whenever you're looking across large spans of time, then you're looking at how those two things related because you couldn't, the truth is about creativity, and they talk about this about the TED, we're original, but we're not that original. It, and ideas are like building blocks and they have to build 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 and they have to build, have to build right? And so when you have an artist that comes in and breaks down planar spaces in the way that Cezanne did radically and then you come after, well then where do you go from there? And what kind of conversations do you have about your canvas? Like when you're looking at the Favas who say, oh no, we're going to come in and tell it how it is. And if there's dirt on the road, dude, we're painting it, right? That's because previous to them was a bunch of beautiful portrait paintings that were coming everywhere, and they wanted to tell the beauty of everyday life. But right? we're just painting eyes right. today. I'm going to just keep going back to my I'm, <laughs> I'm having a moment. See, now you started it. <laughs> I'm just going to get back to what I get some glaze. Sherp sure, gone wild. <laughs> we're not going to do. We're going to just goof. But can we see the little fur coming in? We can. Oh, well, you, well, see, the thing is, is that I think Goldilocks is there more. I just see all I see is Goldilocks poking Goldilocks me in the eye. Goldilocks is not here. Just oh, poking me. There it goes. That's not Goldilocks. That's a number six. Oh, number six is poking me in the eye. All right, so I'm just <laughs> coming along here, and I'm adding. I'm paying attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to the fur. <laughs> and I've got a little black and a little burnt sienna, and I'm coming here. Oh, so we have a a, new, a, a ten year old little brush with us. How Emmy. are you liking this? Who is it? Emily. Hi, Emily. How are you liking this? Are you going to try to do a really realistic eye? I think so. I hope so, Emily. We have a lot of people who are who are here to do the realistic eye with us. Dude, it's fun. And when you do this, you'll start to add this to your other compositions. Mm -hmm. When you stop and do a study like this, and then you really examine, that's what studies are for, is so that when you're doing a bigger piece and you're working on an overall scale, right, that you're thinking about things in these more complete territories, right? So see how this fur is starting to come together. We haven't even done the whole thing. That, that's how I'm blowing your minds right now. We haven't even done the whole thing. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get a little more thalo blue. I always put out too much paint. What is wrong with me? What is it? I'm going to get this bright, 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 bright green, and a little blending medium. And I'm going to keep coming here. And I am highlighting... I'm looking for the areas of the eye that are the brightest. And I'm trying to make sure that I am telling that whole story and enough of that story. Now you have to say hi and art high fives to Lindsay, who just stepped in. Lindsay, oh my God, show Lindsay what I'm doing. She's going to be totally into it. <laughs> I just thought I'd let them know we could. <laughs> just do some eyes. Mm -hmm. She puts some yeah. eyes out. Just drop that realistic thing down. Every once in a while, I just like, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, we do that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lindsay has the uh, pretty lilacs coming up. Is that coming up, sweetie? There's I, some really gorgeous watercolor lilacs. I think so. I'm, I'm really excited about we're, it. We're on that 30 second delay, so she'll, I'm sure she'll be like, it's coming up. Yeah. On or, this time, in this place. Or, you know what? I've been out of town, so I, I miss stuff, is what you, happened to me. You do, Kate. We, we traveled for a week. We did. We went to the space. Went to spaces. We went to the spaces in New York. In all, we've been in all the spaces in New York. We have been. I have now officially filmed in every studio <laughs> in the space in New York. Isn't that just the weirdest thing? <laughs> like, I will go to all of them. And it will be magnificent. But I have. Because yeah. I'm a completionist. And all the gamers in the room go, oh, yeah. Oh, wait. She, I'm she powered leveled. I'm being told that I'm ignoring their Sherpettes. I'm not ignoring anybody. Oh my gosh, no, no. No one's what ignored. I, no, I'm, no being I, crazy. We're so tired. <laughs> oh, they're like, read our questions. I'm like, oh no, what questions am I missing? It's I'm I'm i I'm trying to juggle, I promise. All right. Now I'm gonna freak y'all out. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow ochre and some of my white. I'm gonna make sure I have some of this medium here because I want it to flow off my brush. Okay, so there's a question about uh, using the use of a rake brush to recreate the illusion of fur, or are there better options? Sure. So you can always use technique brushes. I mean, they're there because they have an effect, right? Yeah. And they do something, and then an artist who's really great at their rake brush is going to make it look like the greatest brush that ever was. 
Um, the real truth behind that is that that's just their affinity to that tool. It's not really intrinsically. I, I think it's like golf. I say as someone who never plays golf. <laughs> I think it's like golf in that there's a really cool club, but if you don't got the stroke, it didn't happen in any ways, but you get to give this to Tiger Woods, and yeah, he can do some stuff with that club. I don't know. I don't know enough about I golf. I think you're doing mind. okay. <laughs> I don't know. I agree. I think, I think you're reaching for appropriate. <laughs> Am I? I yeah. like, I don't know. So I'm going to come here with my detail brush, Yeah. and I'm going to start really telling some some fine stories with that and this is where i'm talking about that smooth canvas would be my friend right now ah because it would really allow me to um turn it some fluid paint too i'm gonna put out some fluid anything you can do to improve the fluidity of your paint right now for fine detail uh, this is fluid acrylic and it helps right mm-hmm flow paints, all of that good right now. It's very light, and what I'm trying to do is just tell some of these fine stories. You pull it down just a touch? Yeah. And there's just a lot going on here, so give me a second. So, so what was that medium you just picked up there? I picked out, this is Titanium White by Golden. It's a fluid medium. So they have fluid flow and heavy body. And the issue with the heavy body is sometimes it does not flow off the brush easily to do this detail work. And so you've got to adjust it with a medium or an agent. So what, so. what is the difference between soft body and heavy body paint? Soft body and heavy body paint. And I actually have been to the Golden Factory, so I'm even better at explaining this than I ever was before. Basically, it's about the polymer body that's applied to it. Yeah. The lake. Yeah, so they word I've learned the lake that the pigment is applied to has a greater polymer body, whereas the fluid paints are self leveling and won't hold a brush stroke and flow off your brush better. Um, really, honestly, it's like um, any of the one stroke paints, oh, crap, did the different quality entirely, but just the fluidity of the paint and the way it exits your brush is different, but it's not going to do impasto. So, like in a in a given brand of paint, a soft body and heavy bodied paint should have the same amount of pigment, just with a different. You remember too. That's right. The pigment should be the same. They, they in a good the... quality paint, the pigment between. Actually, sometimes I feel like there's more pigment in the flow. I think that that's because there's slightly less other additives. Other and... materials, so it's more opaque, and, and it the fluids just have a ton of pigment. Yeah, and it's uh, it was interesting because the heavy bodies only you know have almost identical almost it's like it's like one percent or two percent of this agent that causes them to have that really heavy body that really thickener. Yeah, because it's just a it's a reaction that causes it to be to be thickened up. So it doesn't take very much of that thickener to make it happen. I know it's sort of interesting. Yeah, it's there's no less pigment. I love that. I'm just coming here, and you see I'm just looking for the story of the fur, and I'm telling, in nope. this area, I'm telling the individual fur. <laughs> see how realistic it gets? Now we're really feeling that. So Ian, the off-kilter crafter, just stopped by to say hello. Hi, Ian. How are you? Everyone's everyone's high, art high-fiving him as he's come in. Well, yeah, because we have the art family in art. So tell you what, having spent some time at the YouTube studios, I'm really glad to be in art. Yeah. yeah. Why do you say that? Well, just because we have the best community. Yeah, that's true. I I totally agree with that. I was listening to people talk about their community and they, they have almost an adversarial <laughs> relationship with them. So I am super glad that I have the relationship with you guys that I get to have. I was jealous of some of the other YouTubers who got to use like the Ronin DGI Steadicam and yeah, the you had a whole moment. Dragon 6K camera and, you know... That was so really cool. what I can tell you is what happened to us in the YouTube studio for the three days they were there. Because when I first went to Next Step, they didn't let John go. And I really felt like I didn't get to show what I could do because John wasn't there and they, wouldn't, they couldn't let John go. So we went back to do what we could do. And then, I don't know, we started having some fun and we did some goofy stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not... <laughs> oh, shout out to seven-month-old Leia. Hey, seven month old Leia. Leia. So, um, you know, uh, enjoy the videos that are coming. <laughs> <laughs> And happy belated birthday to Ian. Happy belated birthday to Ian. See, we're just, I've just got this yellow ochre and the titanium white. We're just 
doing these fine hairs. And the finer detail and the more you're willing to just chill out and just paint this thing here. Now on this, on eyes, um, I would definitely recommend a gloss varnish. No, uh, when on, on your flow agent, uh, Angie was asking, what does the Sherpa feel is the best flow aid to add to heavy body paints? So I really like the retarders, the glazing mediums. Um, I really like flow aids. Um, but really only from particular companies. Definitely test them because they don't all perform the same way. <laughs> Luna just came in and had one of those clip-on earrings. It was hurting her ears, so oh. I had to pluck it off. Yeah, if you just leave that on all day, sweetheart, that's not going to be fun. Yep. And Let's so, you know, not that water isn't a good flow aid. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> water is a good flow aid. It's You know, it affects the paint. And so if you're... If you're trying to have paint that's exactly perfect, or you're get, trying to get something so specific, you know, that might not be an acceptable medium for you. The, oh, there's a new, am I allowed to say? Um, I can't remember if I'm allowed to say from well, the like factory tour. So I'm not going to say anything, but there could be something cool that I could tell you. I just have to check if I can tell you. Okay. Well, then see, that's good. <laughs> if you when in doubt, I don't want to upset anybody because I was treated really well. <laughs> I was so <laughs> excited to be treated so well. <laughs> So see, I'm just coming here and I'm just telling this. You know, I'll, we could do this in time lapse, but I just want you to see how it gets put out. Yeah, what brush is that you're using there? This is just a Royal Lang Nickel 10 over zero. It's little. They got all, look, on this guy, these brushes will not live long. <laughs> right? Well, why is that? Because, you know, acrylic is rough on brushes. It gets up in the ferrule and it splays them. And there's some things we can do to recover them, but, you know, they, they take some damage mm. from the medium. Now, Ian was asking, what's the difference between water and flow aid? The difference between water and, f well, okay, flow aid is something that you add to your water to improve the way that the paint flows off. Like if there's any issue with your water or your paint or anything, that's going to improve its viscosity off the brush. I believe it's a water softener. Yeah, I think it is. It uses salt to, but I, I don't quote me on that. Don't quote us on that because we're not the official golden yeah, I don't know. technician. So, but generally that's what that is. And then, um, then there's blending, there's blending mediums. Those are like, they, they'll be called either a blending medium or they'll be called a retarder. And that slows the drying of the paint and allows it to flow off the brush easier. And then there's glazing mediums, which are not a retarder, but they really slow the drying of the paint and they make it very translucent. Gotcha. So if you just use water... You could be affecting the color and what's happening in the paint. And there's minerals and stuff in your paint. In right. Your water yeah. Like I was surprised at how many like antibacterial agents are required for paint. Yeah. You it, see, I'm just doing these little hairs here and how, what a difference it makes. Mm -hmm. I put out so much more paint than I needed. So much more paint. And you could come back with several little tones for hair and you know it's just this is what you're doing so it's gonna come right here all right now i'm gonna rinse that out because i feel like i've kind of told you how's this looking it is it fantastic. realistic yet <laughs> i think it's very realistic <laughs> realistic so here's the thing that you're gonna do you're gonna take your detail brush and you're gonna load and i really recommend a fluid paint for this and you're going to come along this inside between this gray lid and this black outside. And you're going to make the thinnest, finest line that you can pull off. I'm resting my hand. And then you're going to do a dash and a dot. These are not a continuous line. Don't do a continuous line. Because it'll, it'll blow the look. And then come along between what would be the eyeball and your lid that you painted in. couple of these soft reflection lines. Maybe one right up here in the corner. Are you guys tripping out? And we kind of have done this, this on the yeah, Fox. We've done this. And I think of the dragon too. Yeah. This is an important thing, man. Don't skip this thing. <laughs> don't yeah. skip this part of the thing. Now, on the reflection, I don't like to do just pure white. Why I is don't, that? I, I think that that's not how reflections look on an eye. 
they generally have some of what's what they're reflecting in them. I'm going to pull some glazing, uh, some retarder here. So you don't want it to be just pure white because it won't feel true. Right? And so I'm going to start putting this reflection. And we've got a reflection on this eye here. And some of it may be lighter than other parts of it. I just want to make sure. I'm curving it because it curves around. There's a little bit of it off there. And then I'm going to put some of it right here that I see. Look at that. Yeah. We're nearly done. I'm just going to put a great. slightly. Huh? That looks so good. Does that look good? I love it. You loving it? I'm going to grab some of my just white. Now I'll get some just white. But I want to be very careful with it. And it's going to be on a very dry brush. And I'm going to pull from just the top of my reflection a slightly brighter area. Because what we're actually... Here's what we... Is that mixing white? No, this is just regular white. I'm just being very light with it, and I've got blending medium. And by regular white, you mean titanium white? Titanium white, but not mixing. Okay, but not mixing. Okay. okay what are you doing? You keep, uh, you keep missing you going over there and dabbing something. I'm what just getting? getting some titanium white. Okay, you're just getting a little titanium and white. And I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure it's not too heavy on my brush, so I have some control over how much I dispense. Okay. Right. You're just going real like, fast. So, so here, what we can see, what you know here now is how many light sources that was reflecting in that, that eye. We do? Yeah. So Remember we talked about that? I, I know, but you had to explain it for everyone else here. Okay, so you can tell how something was lit by looking at the reflection in the eye. If you ever want to know how somebody's like YouTube show is lit, like zoom into their eye and you're going to be able to see how many sources of light. If they're doing three-point lighting, they got a, obviously the ring lights and op. Dude, how, look how good that looks. Seriously. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I could be, you know, I, I was thinking that's that's, you know, that could definitely be like a monster eye, or mm -hmm. could you could you, that could be turned into so many cool things. I just I like looking at. Well, it. if you're working at Pixar, right, and you're trying to design something, you're working in any animation studio, any gaming studio, and you're designing creatures, you're going to actually do several studies of different kinds of eyes. Like you could go through and you could do lizard eyes like this. You could do bird eyes like this. You're just looking for what's happening here. This is we did a cat's eye, yeah. right? But any of these eyes are totally possible. It's just about slowing down and recognizing that you're going to be at the canvas for a minute, and you're looking for tonalities and you're looking for colors and you're looking for textures, paying attention to where the fur lays, looking for the reflections, and taking the time to make all the little subtle differences that can happen in an eye and pay attention to that lighting and then when you paint something like i that's like one of the things in fine art i'm known for is having these like really bombastic eyes yeah but i slowed down and i did a lot of eye studies <laughs> that's what a study is it's about just slowing down and be like can i paint this really cool thing and sometimes that's like frustrating because you're like wow i want the whole painting because this looks so good Right. And yeah, that's true. But it's also important to pull elements out and really study them. Like if you're trying to paint a pet's nose, you want to pull that element out and really study it. Yeah. And I'm also really proud of this because I think sometimes like because I kind of keep my paintings a little bit mellow that maybe YouTube doesn't know I can bring the hammer. <laughs> Well, you know, you know those. And those, I can. Yeah, I have can. the realism hammer. You we do. can do that oh, all look. day. Give me some there time it is. lapse. Look at that. Yeah. Give me some time lapse. I go big and realistic. Just blow, do some stuff. With blows. Realism, again, is just about breathing and slowing down and just paying attention to what you're seeing and just being Layers. agile to like you're going with something and you'll see something new. And every time you attempt to do realism, you attempt to do this process, you will get better at it. You are not supposed to start out here. Yeah. That is not how the art journey works. You don't start out here. You get here from practice. Yeah. Now, Ian points out this would make an excellent Ewok eye. Yep. I think I would agree. You yep. can see the predatory nature there in it. They're definitely Ewok c capable. So, yeah. um, 
you know those you know those 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 videos or those movies where you saw, saw as a kid where you look out there in the forest just erupts with all the eyes mm-hmm. there. I want that to be our Facebook page. I want to see all the eyes yes. of our community. I want to see like two hundred eyes up there, all glowing, looking back. And I want to say thank you to everybody who came today. Yeah, thank you. There's like over two hundred people here, all just hanging out, looking at eyes with us, make telling jokes. And watch, we're going to be dropping things besides the vlogs that we're getting caught up on. We're going to be dropping things um, all week. Yep. And as they approve, because everything we filmed in the in the space we'll be here has week, to approve folks. through YouTube. Yes. And art makes them nervous. They're always like, did you draw all this? I'm like, yes, I drew all this. <laughs> you see me in the video drawing it? It's all me. <laughs> so, you know, they'll, they'll need to look at that and some music stuff and everything. But as soon as we get it out, I've got um, kids projects coming up. All right. A lot of kids projects. So watch for those and more questing. I think we're going to quest on fur and things on Thursday and or we're going to work on how to get your pet photo. We're going to do some all we're just all week pets. All, all week. week pets. Send me pictures of your pets in the studio with you supporting you or video. Mm-hmm. Any pet. Bearded dragon, yes. Yes. Cute adorable tail wagging pig, yes. Chicken Yes, sheep, yes, dog, yes, cat, yes, bird, yes, 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 yes. Snail, sure. Yep. <laughs> Goldfish. Goldfish, yes. So whoever's being there for you every day, accepting you unconditionally and loving you unconditionally and knows that you're having anxiety and comes and lands on your painting, lays down purring on your wet paint. Mm-hmm. If you're painting with a pet, please don't paint with true cadmium pigments. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely think of that. And get those sago palms out of the yard. Yeah. Or at least keep the animals. Who knew they ate those things? We have some we got to pull out. We didn't know. We love you guys. we see you later. I want to paint with you again really soon. Bye-bye. See you with the easel. Bye-bye.